In today's video, I need to talk about why RJ Barrett's play hasn't been all bad this year, and why he, the way he's trending in the development he's currently having this year could actually be a long-term benefit to the New York Knicks, assuming that he does get his offensive play up to a respectable level again. The reason I say that is because his defense has been by far and away the best of his NBA career. Again, small sample size, it's only been four games as of the time I am recording this, which is October 27th. And sure, this counting stats aren't necessarily showing that you that. He's averaging the least amount of steals uh, per game of his career. But his effort, his engagement on the offensive end has been extremely significant. He's playing over 34 minutes a night in large part due to the fact that his defensive engagement is there because otherwise, based on current production, he would not be playing 34 minutes a night. Tom Thibodeau was not scared to play the hot hand and play who's playing well on any given night. So if RJ Barrett wasn't giving him anything on defense, he would not be playing 34 minutes a night right now, the second most on the team. But he is. And there's a reason for that. His defense has been extremely good amongst the fact that it has to be for this team to be successful because the Knicks perimeter defense is not great within their starting lineup. Uh, Kemba Walker is a terrible defender. Evan Fournier is not a great one. But RJ Barrett, with his length at 6'6 six six and the strength he has put on and has had, is allowing him to be a good 2 or 3 defender, uh, depending on the matchup, depending on what the better player is, depending on what the personnel is on the court. And he's doing a pretty darn good job of it. Uh, the three guys that he has spent significant time guarding this season, or if at least in the time he has guarded them, they've taken significant amount of shots, is Jalen Brown, Franz Wagner, and Jason Satum. Jason Satum is 3 of 16 against RJ Barrett, shooting a bit under 19% from the field. Franz Wagner, 4 of 11, shooting 36%. And Jalen Brown, 2 of 7, shooting 28.6%. Only one of those guys have hit 1-3, that being Tatum, who shot one of six from deep against him. And that is extremely telling of the fact that he has played good defense against some fairly good players, specifically Tatum and Brown. And also in the fact that this is crucial to the Knicks' success, and so I'm sure there is very much an emphasis within the Knicks organization, uh, from Tom Thibodeau specifically, of course, with as much as he loves defense, that RJ Barrett's focus to start the year should be on the defensive end. The offense will come. There's no doubt about that. He was very good on offense last year, improved a lot as a three-point shooter. I have no doubts that that will return. He hasn't been shy with his shot this year. He's shooting more threes. He's just not hitting them. He's confident that they'll come. And especially in as dynamic as an offense as they have now with Randall, Kemba, and Fournier, he's getting more open threes, hence why he's taking more, but taking less from inside of the three-point line because he doesn't have to be a main guy on this, on this offense anymore he can devote more energy more effort and just more of his dedication to the defensive end and not have to lead the offense as much and because the other guys on this team on the perimeter are not great defensive players he is that guy to give them the defense he is that guy to be their workhorse defensively which might mean a bit of a dip in production especially early on in the year as he starts to take on that role and adjust and get into game shape to put in that effort on both sides of the floor. But ultimately, this is what this New York Knicks team needs. Obviously, they're going to need him to start shooting better as well, but that will come with time. I'm not too concerned about that. And again, it is a small sample size. But having RJ Barrett as a better defender and being able to lock down guys like Tatum, guys like Jalen Brown, is going to be extremely important to the Knicks' success this season, their ability to remain a top defensive team in the NBA after losing some key defensive pieces, and ultimately just improving their offense, bringing in Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier, but of course now you don't have Alfred Payton, you don't have Frank Nandlikina, and you lose some guys in the defensive end, Ricky Pollock. But ultimately, RJ Barrett's going to have to pick up some of that defensive duties he has done so, so far, and sure the steal numbers aren't jumping out at you, he's not causing a bunch of chaos in that way, but at the end of the day, he is not allowing the elite perimeter guys on the opposing team to get buckets against him. Tobias Harris, in, in a little time, only shot one of three against him. 
there's some good names on this list when you're looking at Tatum, Brown, Toby Harris. Again, it's only four games in. The point being is the top guys that he has faced, he has been matched up against them for portions of the game. Jason Tatum, 11 and a half minutes. Franz Wagner, 13 minutes. And then Jalen Brown for a bit under four. And none of them have been able to do anything significant. Tobias Harris was only for a bit over 30 seconds, but he was only one of three in that time frame as well. And so we'll revisit this later on in the season, see if this trend continues, see if his offense picks up. He continues to be the perimeter defensive guru and lockdown guy for this team. But ultimately, it's something that I wanted to bring up. It's something that I wanted to acknowledge for RJ Barrett. As a Canadian, I'm slightly biased to it, but I wanted to talk about it, make it aware, give RJ, cre RJ credit where credit is due and give it as a starting point to see where he can be a few weeks down the road and see if he can continue this defensive brilliance moving forward through the rest of the season. That being said, that is my thoughts on RJ Barrett and his defensive impact so far in the 2021-22 season. But be sure to let me know your thoughts down below on RJ Barrett and the Knicks so far to start the year. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Be sure to click the box on screen if you want to hear my thoughts on, my, on the Newark Knicks my season preview for them for this 2021-22 season. That being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.